Hello guys and welcome back to another Valheim build tips guide video which is based on more advanced techniques for building although we're not going to be talking about stone just yet that'll be in a separate video so be sure to stay to the end for this as I've also included a bonus tip this time too so tip number one which we covered in our basics build guide I'll place a link to that above as it's full of other information we haven't included in this one if you're struggling to build a plank or beam into the ground, then place a wall down underneath it, then place the beam. It's gonna make it much easier to snap to. If you're building at ground level, make sure all your lower build items are blue. This ensures that they're grounded, giving your build the max stability possible before you're reaching later game items such as iron beams. To help you get everything blue, it's best building on a flat or level piece of ground. Now this can actually be achieved using a combination of both the pick and the trowel. So to create a flat level, use the trowel to smooth, then place dirt in the middle of any small ditches which can't be smoothed out. At this point, if there's a mound that can't be smoothed out once you've done this, Use a pick to dig, followed by the trowel, once again to fill in the hole. Use this in combination to create a flat area like this. For builds above the ground, use scaffolding to create safe areas to work from so you're not constantly falling to your death. And if you are trying to build floors outwards and don't want to run the risk of falling to your death, use beams to build the supports to the side of the build first, then place the floors. The snapping points make it much easier to place the floors, saving you a lot of experience loss. One thing that I love to do for detail in my builds is creating recessed walls. You can do this by placing a small doorway down. This gives you three snappable points for your walls, allowing you to create depth. Place a wall behind, as your base layer and then layer in front of it the details that you want and you can create some pretty impressive builds from that. You can actually combine this technique with the banners or item holders in order to get some really cool looking designs. It's definitely worth checking out if you want to level up your building techniques and also get that extra detail in your builds and talking about detail the more snapping points you have, the more detail you can add to your build. If your build is supported, then consider using smaller beams rather than larger ones. These will give you more snapping points to work from, giving you more chance for creating better detail. My next tip relates to being on top of your roof. If you don't have scaffolding, it can be very difficult to walk along the side of the roof and quite often you fall off and die. Well, here's a solution. So if you're working on the rooftop, you can actually place down ladders, which will allow you to work alongside them. I don't mind seeing them once the build's finished. I find it can sometimes add detail, but if not, you can always delete them. But while you're building the roof, this is really useful. And my next tip relates to raising the ground. Often when you're at first raising up the ground, you'll spam and try and lift the level up. And that will use a lot of resources very quickly. Well, the way it works is similar to how smoothing works. In that where you're pointing at the cursor is where the height of the, the ground will be raised to. So you can save a lot of resources by aiming at the highest point of a ridge and build outwards, raising the ground as you go, rather than constantly spamming the raise button. It'll save you a lot of time harvesting resources. Trust me, I've been there, I've done that, it wasn't fun. You can actually cheat building underground in this game. Find a location where there are multiple rocks and use a pick to dig under. Don't worry, you'll be sheltered from the rain and it's certainly worth the challenge. You can even check out my rather cozy little hobbit home build here. And we're only going to be working on that further later on with Hearth and Home. 
If you want to build a circular structure, there are various ways in which you can create a circular look, but the most accurate approach is to place a plank in the middle of your build and then use that single standing plank to create a complete circle and to build outwards from there. Again, once you've got your foundation set, lift the ground to make sure your base is fully supported. To create neat floors, follow the inside wall of the build with a small floor so that the grain flows with the structure. Then fill the middle with larger floors with the grain all flowing in the same direction. Rain damages non-roofed structures up to 50% but no further, so don't be too worried about building a pier, it won't be destroyed. The same goes for bridges. Want to build high from the start? Then your best option is actually to consider building in a tree. The trunk will make the adjacent structure items fully supported, so you'll be able to work some pretty epic builds into that tree and get pretty high. The only thing I do recommend is staying away from trolls and do not bring them back to your base because that could be catastrophic. And finally, before we get to the bonus tip, if you are enjoying my content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and why not follow me on Twitch. I play the Valheim all the time and I'm really enjoying it and looking forward to getting more guides out for you. And also I'll be keeping you up to date with Valheim news because Hearth and Home is going to be epic. But moving on to our final bonus tip, the Y supports can really be useful for reaching the center floors of the builds with more stability. In order to do this, Place a normal T support first, then add your Y supporting beams. You should see the floor become more reinforced. If not, however, delete the upper part of the T. That way the Y is supporting the whole build. And whilst we're on the subject of beams, if you need to use iron beams, which sometimes you do, you can actually obscure them or hide them into the core wood beams just by placing them over the top so people don't really know that you're adding the support. So there you are guys, 13 and a bit tips for more advanced builds. If you think they were good, wait until Hearth and Home update is released. I'm really looking forward to that one. And if you don't know much about it, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with the Valheim news updates and also further guides from me and future time lapses. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and also a huge thank you goes to our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons The Calamity, Cerebral Tag, Trebor and JP Zone TV, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons Matt Lippard, Chris McCabe and Lord of July and our Blood Moon of the Day, James Irwin. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.